Merry Christmas, Hannah here, and Christmas is just a few days away. I'm so excited. In fact, I brought some gifts with me, just finished wrapping all three of them. I'll get back to them in just a moment. But there are a couple of Christmas brain teasers I wanna see how smart you really are. Are you ready? Okay, first one. Do you know why everyone loves Frosty the Snowman? Because he's so cool. Okay, second one. What is Frosty's favorite Christmas treat? Ice Krispie treats, get it? Okay, and the last one. Where does Frosty keep all of his money? In the snowbank. Well, you're pretty smart. One might even say wise when it comes to Frosty jokes. Today, our Christmas story comes well after the first Christmas night, when the wise men came to visit baby Jesus after following the star. But did you ever wonder what makes the wise men so wise? Well, let's watch our, our story today and find out. Inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus was born, there was a group of wise men who lived in the Parthian Empire, far to the east of Jerusalem. Now, no one knows why these wise men were looking for a special star, but it could have happened this way. Hundreds of years before, God's people had been defeated and taken as exiles to Babylon. One of them was Daniel, and through God's help, he gained the favor of the king. You will rule over Babylon and take charge of all the other wise men. Now, Daniel held this important role for much of his life, even after Babylon became part of Persia. During this time, he shared his love for God and his knowledge of Jewish scriptures with the other wise men. The Lord is the one true God. He has told me many things that will happen. Over hundreds of years, some of the wise men in Persia continued to study Jewish scriptures, even under different rulers. Many of them may have even remembered Daniel. So when several wise men discovered a brand new star, they knew it meant something important. Look, there in the west, it's a new star rising. Now, we don't know the names of these men or really exactly how many there were, but we'll call them Melchior, Casper, and Balthazar. A new king, maybe? Oh, ooh, ooh. can we have a party? The wise men hurried to the archive room where they dug through dusty scrolls to find the writings of Jewish prophets. Ah, here are the words of Daniel. God had given Daniel some strange visions of a savior who would come and rescue the Jewish people. The time he tells of could be right now, but depending on how you read it. So, Party time? And look here, in the scroll of numbers. A star will come from among the people of Jacob. A king will rise up out of Israel. The star, the timing. I think this is it. Party time! These wise men did far more than just throw a party. They planned an epic road trip to honor the new king in his own land. I'll pack up the food. I got the heart for some road tunes. Who's got the camels? Ugh, you can handle them. I got the party gifts. The wise men packed up beautiful gifts worthy of a true king. Then they set out on their long journey across the desert. Due west. Follow that star. Oh, I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more. Yeah, I think I'm ahead of my time. After many long weeks, the wise men neared the city of Jerusalem. Surely someone will know of this new king. The wise men entered the city, causing a stir with their fine robes and curious questions. Where is the child who's been born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and now we have come to worship him. And we got party gifts. In the palace, King Herod heard news of the foreigners and he didn't like the sound of a new king. Outrageous. King Herod called on the chief priests and the teachers of the law. Where is this Messiah supposed to be born? Uh, please note my air quotes. In Bethlehem. Humph. Humph. How do you know? They are Prophet Micah, your majesty. He says, um, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are certainly not the least important among the towns of Judah. A ruler will come out of you. He will rule my people Israel uh, like a shepherd. Oh, well, I see. Have these wise men come see me. 
and keep it on a down low. Soon, the wise men were ushered into the palace. When did this special star appear? At the perfect time for a party! I want you to go to Bethlehem for me. Search for this child and report back when you find him. Then I can go and worship him too. <laughs> Please ignore the air quotes. So the wise men left the palace and immediately continued their journey, following the star for several more miles. Look, it's resting over that little town of Bethlehem and that little house in Bethlehem. Time to party! The wise men soon arrived at the little house where Jesus and his family were staying. Mary and Joseph welcomed them in, and the wise men bowed low before Jesus, who is now a toddler. We brought gifts! The wise men brought out their carefully packed treasures. Gold? Frankincense. And this is myrrh. These are gifts for a king. Precisely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah! The three wise men worshipped the tiny king, God's very own son. Before they returned home, though, God spoke to them in a dream. Do not go back to Herod. Yeah, I could tell he was a bad dude. So the wise men took a different road, bypassing Jerusalem, as they returned to their own country. So what made the wise men so wise? They knew they could celebrate Jesus' birth anytime, not just when he was first born. And over the last four weeks, we've talked about several stories that are often called the Christmas stories. And this isn't wrong because they are the stories of how God sent Jesus into the world and they tell us what we know about his birth. But think about something for a moment. Are these stories only Christmas stories? What I mean is this. Why can't we read and celebrate these stories all year long? Think about it. God sent Jesus, the light of the world, born a king, and it was God's greatest gift to us. Isn't that gift worth celebrating all year long? Decorations or not, Jesus is worth celebrating always. Not just at Christmas time, but all times. How can we be sure that we don't just remember these important stories during the month of December? What are some ways that we can remember and then celebrate all year long? You are hearing me right. I want you to celebrate Christmas all the time not just in December. In fact, I'm keeping my tree up until July 4th. Well, maybe not. Anyways, you get the idea. Merry Christmas.